Hey, hey, welcome back to the channel. It's awesome that you're tuning in. In today's video, we are going to do a chit chat regarding the Gigabyte, the bricks, if I'm saying it correctly. So I just came across this thing some time ago and I didn't even know Gigabyte made mini PCs. Where there are all kinds of different versions. Today, we're going to be looking at the i7, where there is also an i3 and i5. So what you're getting are two front USB ports, the fast ports. We're having over here the microphone and the headphone jack. You can see there are some ventilation holes at the side. At the back we're finding one single HDMI, another mini HDMI port, RGT45, another two USB ports, and the input for the power supply. But let's take a close look at the specifications. So the user disk is at this moment a two terabyte drive, but that's beside the point. Temperatures are 43 Celsius, so it's not the best, let's say overall temperatures for idle, for just powering on. So in total having 16 gigabyte of memory, so it's going to be more than enough for the emulation part. OpenGL 4.6, CPU model number is the i7-6500U, that has a 2.50 gigahertz of a clock speed, and then in here having four CPU number. Max frequency is going to be 3100 megahertz, so that's actually what it is. So in on board we're getting the HD graphics 520, so it's quite a little bit older version, but it's going to be still very interesting to see, so let's get into some emulation. The machine has been booted up and yeah, with this i7, I do expect great things from this or however, don't expect like extreme performance with a simple reason. This thing does have like an older GPU on board, but I think we can push it a little bit further and we're going to have some great overall performance thanks to the i7. So let's get into the menu itself by pressing start and let's take a close look at the system settings and the information what we're actually dealing with now. How about emulation? So when it comes to this, it's going to be interesting to see because we do have different kind of systems to try out. We're going to be testing a couple of basic stuff, but that will run just fine. Think about the Sega 32X or whatsoever, Mega CD, you know. We're going to be Dreamcast. That will going to be the system that's going to be interesting because we can do a little bit of an upscaling. And where we do have an older GPU, maybe with Sega Saturn to see how the overall emulation is there. Because we did have like a lot of game boxes and mini PCs that struggle with these platforms. And of course, PlayStation 2 and how it would perform with PlayStation 3, PlayStation Portable and stuff like that. So there will the main focus be. But still, even I already mentioned before that it's not going to be a problem whatsoever with playing the old school games. It's just a lot of fun to boot them up. And man, those games are never getting old for me. However, when you're going to be playing them, you have different kind of ways you can play. You have different filters, blurry filters, CRT filters, you name it, bezels. You can implement all kinds of cool stuff with these older games. And because of the power of the mini PC, we have just more than enough to actually implement them and having no, let's say, negative effect on the overall performance of the emulation itself. I've been setting it to 720p at this point, uh, simply because I've been messing with the different emulators, different settings. With upscaling, this PC don't really want to work with me when it comes to this is some Dreamcast platform. Or yet some okay emulation performance with the Naomi system. Dreamcast is quite disappointing. So I'm guessing I still need to like do a little bit of tweaking, getting the full 60 FPS without any dips whatsoever. You can see it dips to 48 frames per second. So performance wise for upscaling, yeah. But what is interesting, getting into the Sega Saturn, it seems to be that the overall emulation performance on 4K rendering resolution is possible on this mini PC. So it's also like depending what kind of emulator you're running and what kinds of GPU and CPU combination you're having. And I found it quite disappointing with the Dreamcast and the Naomi system. Today I'm just in the mood of like say seeing how far we can push these older devices. With 4K render resolution you can see that it dips to 45 frames per second. You can just clearly hear that it dips to 37. So it's a little bit too much for this PC, even this is the faster version, it doesn't matter. We do need a little bit of um, downscaling. No 4K, then we're going to be having overall better performance. Quite disappointing, but there is nothing to do about it. Let's break. Oh yeah! <laughs> With upscaling, sometimes we do have these weird lines in the screen that just happens. If you're going to be doing native, we don't have this problem. But I just wanted to quickly see 720p PlayStation. You can just actually say that it struggles big time with PlayStation 720p. 
And that's a little bit of a downside, but also understandable with a simple reason because this is just old, let's say, specs we're using over here. So let's switch to native resolution and let's see if it's going to be running just fine then. Going back to the same game, same situation, or at least now native resolution. Mm, it does still struggle with this. You can also mess with the emulator if you want to. To see if we can have overall better performance there. So I'll show you what I mean. Let's reboot it. However, when it comes to PlayStation 3, we do have some weird things going on over here. It loads as emulator and loading times should be a little bit faster than the i3 version, i5 version because of the more power, more speed actually of the cores and everything else. But the loading time, depending on what kind of game, it would have a difference. Some of the games are very huge, so they take forever to load up. You can just see compiling shaders all the time. It stutters. That's also one of the reasons why I'm guessing that the Rich Racer game was actually not booting up at all. So when it comes to a PlayStation 3 emulation, we just need to have overall better, way better performance. And I've been playing this on an i7, but most of them were like 11th generation. And they are like so much more powerful in combination with a better GPU and so. So PlayStation 3 is out of the question. So let's move into the PlayStation Portable with a 720p upscaling. And I did notice that it struggles. It struggles big time with a lot of games. Now it's having an okay performance with 50 frames per second. So when it comes to that, it seems to be working fine. However, it all depends on what kind of game you're going to be playing. If you're going to be putting in God of War, that's going to be having a lot of problems. And you can see that it even dips to the 40 frames after trying to hit the guy down. So yeah, that's quite unfortunate when it comes to the overall performance. And again, like many systems, we need to do a lot of tweaking. Moving on to the N64 and having the 1080p rendering resolution going on. So where the N64 doesn't run on the cheap boxes, we do have great performance in native, but also can do a little bit of an upscaling with this one. I'm always fighting with my freaking controls. It is possible that some of the games will have a minor hiccup. Cruising USA is one of those great test benches that we can do. I've been testing those, let's say games like Cruising, the Exotica, Decon Racing on the cheap boxes with native, that runs okay. But I think for N64 emulation, we just need to have a PC. It can be like an old school dual core, depending also of what kind of, let's say, wishes you personally have. So let's say if you want to have a 1080p or even 4K upscaling going on, yeah, sometimes we do need a lot of power for that. So that is one of the things you need to take consideration when getting into the N64 emulation itself. So with the gameplay, sometimes we're getting different overall results. So let's do a little bit of a gameplay over here. So the 720p rendering resolution I'm actually going to be using now. You can always like mess around with different resolutions. So let's say having a less demanding game, the F0 GX is quite demanding, but you can see 720p. We do have some great performance out of the box. I'm quite surprised by it. Normally we have like a little bit of a hiccup, so it needs time to adjust, but so far so good. And 720p, nice. And if you're going to be having a different game that has, let's say, less overall, let's say, need of power, like a two-dimensional game, you can maybe do it in 1080p or 2K resolution upscaling. But it's something you need to start tweaking for yourself, depending on what game you actually want to play on this. With the i7, I was expecting a lot. And at this point, we can actually play a lot. When it comes to upscaling, there we do miss out a little bit of power. So I did a little bit of a teardown over here for you all. And just to do a quick in peek in the inside. So in here we're having the NVMe that we can replace. We also can put some bottom zero on there. If you're going to be flashing an image to that. And it would be cool. So we have like a built-in NVMe super fast. And then of course we're having over here the RAM modules. 16 gigabyte in total if I'm seeing it correctly. So we can replace them. But it doesn't do any, let's say, overall better performance when it comes to that. So that's it. So this is the thing we're going to be getting with the Gigabyte Mini PC itself.